First of all, Greg, hold on a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you all should have been on your feet. I, I mean it. I get him every week. I get him every week. Uh, <laughs> this is who he is. He's awesome. And videos will be available. Yeah. <laughs> no, I want to, I'll tell you the truth. When, when, when you're a pastor and you, you know, I watch different people on television, people that I like, and, and there are men I respect in this city, but when I hear someone speak like that, I, I really take my, if I had a hat on, i take my hair off to you. Yeah. And I feel the same way about this next speaker. These are men that uh, talk the talk, but walk the walk as well. Amen. And I've known Daryl quite a number of years now, and we met uh, at a meeting uh, that was, uh, was called the Nevada Renewal Project, and it was under the umbrella of the American Renewal Project. And uh, a man by the name of David Lane from Texas had financed uh, these gatherings to let pastors know that we have every right just to stand in this pulpit and speak the truth Amen. and not be afraid that we're going to lose our tax-exempt uh, status. Right. And you know what the truth is? Even if we did, the hell with it. Right. Truth. Right. Truth. So I want to introduce the next blessing and the next speaker, Pastor Daryl Porter. Yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's, let's give the Lord a hand. Praise. I enjoy praising God. I so much music. But I, I, I just enjoy praising God because He is so awesome. How many of you agree with me that God is awesome? He's an awesome God. And there's a song that's saying, that says, our God is an awesome God. And he really and truly is an awesome God. And uh, this evening, I'm going to share with you some things. The title of the, the theme of our event tonight is understanding what it means to stand. And uh, that's what I'm going to talk on tonight. Uh, what it, understanding what it means to stand. We talk about stand, but we're going to look into what it actually means. First of all, I'm going to ask you if you'll bow your heads and hearts with me in prayer just for a moment. Heavenly Father, I want to thank and praise you for the privilege and opportunity of standing before you, standing for your presence and before your people. I thank you for touching, Lord God, every eye that we might be able to see the things you're revealing to us. Touch every ear that we might be able to hear your voice clearly. And touch every heart that we might be able to receive the engrafted word of life, which is able to change us, make us more, mold us, transform us into the very image, the very likeness, the very character of Christ, to which we give you all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory. And let everyone say amen. 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 Let's give the Lord one more praise. Amen. Yeah. You know, the citizenry, the history and soul of America is relentlessly under attack by other Americans every day. In the midst of all this, God is calling those who believe in him to stand with him. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. I'm going to read you the same verse from four different translations. First of all, it says this, and you may get the message. Watch ye, stand in the faith, be men, be strong. Young, Young's living, literal translation. Watch ye, stand, in the, stand fast in the faith, acquit yourselves like men, be strong. Webster's translation. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong. The easy to read version. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit you like men, be strong, the authorized version. You get, get the message out of four different translations? To stand means to take action. To take action means to get personally involved. Mark, Matthew 20, verse, chapter 20, verse 6 says this, And about the, the eleventh hour, Jesus says, he went, the Bible says, he went out and found others standing idle. And saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle, doing nothing? Going to meetings and sitting and listening and being entertained and hearing these great messages and then going home and doing nothing. Jesus asked the question, Why are you standing around doing nothing? Take action. 
Put your hands and feet, your heart and soul to doing what is right and true. Learn what is true, first of all. Research it. Study. Verify. Then speak what is true. And always know in the back of your mind that truth is its own power. You don't have to prop it up. Truth upholds itself. All you have to do is point it out. Here's the truth right here. Amen. You don't have to fall into strife, discord, and division with others over truth. Christians gain absolutely nothing by fighting, arguing, and contending with other Christians over something that can prove itself. Republicans gain nothing by fighting, arguing, and contending with other Republicans over something that will outlast any dispute. Amen. Once truth is revealed, act on the truth. Stand on it. Yeah. And stand with others who stand on truth. Your world will become more focused and more fulfilled when you do so. And that's what it means to stand. There's no need to wrangle with those who constantly wrangle or wrestle against simple truths and facts. No need to wrestle with them because you both are going to lose. Mark chapter 3 verse 24 says this. Jesus says if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. No need, no, no need to wrestle, wrestling against people who are supposed to be, supposed to be on the same team. You both are going to fall. To our elected leaders and those running for office, cast away fogginess and confusion. Here's what it means to stand. I'm going to give you four things to make it real clear what it means to stand. Number one, know where God stands. Amen. I'm going to see that on that one. That's what the psalmist says. See that. Pause. If you don't know where God stands, how can you stand with God? J.I. Packer wrote, he said, the character of God is today and always will be exactly what it was in the Bible times. <laughs> the Lord says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm the Lord and I change not. Yep. Amen. Number two, know the law. If you don't know the law, how can you stand on the side of the law? We got so many people running our country. Don't even know what the laws are. Don't even know the Constitution. Don't know the laws of their state. Don't know the laws of their county. Don't know the laws of their jurisdiction. Know the law. Amen. Know where the people you serve and represent stand. That's number three. You're supposed to be representing the people, right? That's right. Yeah. You need to know where they stand. If you don't know the people, how can you stand up for them? And number four. You need to know where you stand. Yep. Yep. If you're in the dark about where you stand, you may easily be persuaded to go in any direction. That's right. And we're seeing it every day. You know, conservatives call them, they call them rhinos. Yep. 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 Republicans in name only. Yep. <laughs> Some of them earned That's right. it. Many of those. <laughs> so when you truly stand for something, you defy oh, its time. opposite. Mm -hmm. Jesus stood for his father. He defied the devil, whom he called the prince of this world in John 12, 31. Matthew 6, 24 says this. And get this real clear. This is what Jesus says. He says, no man can serve two masters. That's right. mm -hmm. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else... He will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot, somebody say cannot. Yeah. Say again, cannot. cannot. It's impossible. You cannot yeah. serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon meaning wealth, treasures, honor, fame, anything that lifts you up, makes you feel good, and glorifies you. You're going to either glorify God or you're going to glorify you. You can't serve both. That's right, all right. Those things, now listen carefully, the wealth, the treasures, the honor, and the fame, listen carefully, 
those things will likely and rightly come to you. Correct. But they are never to rule over you. Yeah. Only the God of heaven and earth is ruler. A solid stand for what is right is what sets you apart. That's what sets you apart. You know, the Bible says in the last days that the saints of God will be like stars in the night. You know, you look at the sky, it's totally black. But then when the stars begin to pop out, they, con they contrast the darkness. Mm -hmm. Righteous people are a contrast yes. to unrighteousness. Yes. And when you do what is right, you stand out just like the stars stand out and the sun stands out and the bright moon stands out Amen. in the dark sky. Hallelujah. Martin Luther King says this, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, mm -hmm. but where he stands at times of challenge yes. mm -hmm. and controversy. Mm -hmm. Ever notice how many people in charge don't mm -hmm. stand for much of anything that's right? Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Obviously, you can't look to them as an example. <coughs> it's up to you to know what it really means to stand. And don't be fooled by those who say they're standing and they're not. They're just leaning <laughs> on the unproven and often disproven opinions of others. And what happens when the unproven opinions change? They lean on something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you pay any attention to history, you'll see this again and again and again. Now, here's some clear examples of what it actually means to stand. When Democrats or anybody else says killing babies is okay, well. but you know God judges this to be murder, and you decide to take God's position and act on it, that's a stand. Correct. Yep. When Democrats or anybody else says homosexuality and transsexual behavior is normal, but you know God condemns that behavior, and you decide to take God's position and act on it. That's a stand. You notice that you don't just take a position because we can. My college, one of my college professors, used, Bible college professors, used to say, you know, it's called mental assent. We say we believe, we believe in our mind, but we don't do anything about it. It's just mental assent. So a lot of folks say they believe in something or they stand for something. It's just a mental assent. No, you haven't fulfilled the requirement until that mental uh, assent gets into your hands and feet in action. Yes, sir. Yep. When Democrats or anybody else says those things, it doesn't matter. When anybody else unjustly prefers one race or gender or hybrid gender, hybrid gender over another, <laughs> over what is honest, and you know God condemns that behavior as unjust, and you decide to take God's position and act on it, that's the stand. Yep. Standing is acting, is doing something. This principle applies everywhere, even regarding open borders. Citizens' right to bear arms and protect and defend themselves and others. It applies to that lawful demand for justice, that lawful demand for justice, that lawful demand for justice on those who've committed high crimes and outright treason against the United States of America. The Bible. The Bible has much to say about all of these things. Sure I wouldn't be up here saying it if it wasn't so in the scriptures. Yep. The laws of the land have much to say about all of these things, if you know the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. The American citizen has much to say about all of these things, if you listen to the hearts and cries of the American people. And when you decide to take the right and just position and act on it, that's a stand. Amen. Amen. Everything else is a lean. <laughs> a drawing back. Yep. Is <laughs> even a betrayal. Yep. Catherine Booth said this. If we 
are to better the future, we must disturb the present. We are accountable to God and our community to stand for what is right. It's a trust. And a great challenge is not easy. John Piper said this, and John is a great preacher, very well renowned and respected. He said, if we walk away from risk to keep ourselves safe, we will waste our lives. Yep. So here's the great challenge. When you stand for something, you stand in defiance of its opposite. In today's world, when you defy the opposing political views of the day, you make yourself a target of the opposite. Jesus said this in Luke chapter 10, verse 3. He says, watch what he says. He says, go your ways. Each one of us, go on, take care of your business. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs. Comparatively speaking to the all that you're going to face in the world, I send you forth like lambs among wolves. Yeah. And you know, in the natural, there, that is, there's no, no contest between a lamb and a wolf. You put a lamb and a wolf in the same sphere, it's over for the lamb. Yeah. You know, and that wolf is vicious, fast, you know, determined. He's going to get that lamb. Why in the world would Jesus say, I'm going to send you, you sweet little darling you, you sit up in the court and you, and, you, and you do just laws and you want to do the right thing. I'm going to send you forth among all these wolves. Why would Jesus do that? Because <laughs> he's our shepherd. I'm not used to having the microphone to stabilize. You know I mean? I, I'll be moving all around. <laughs> the congregation you know, to be stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's good for us video people. It's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Video. I mean, we appreciate it. Tell me that. Yeah. You well, tell we appreciate it. It's good for the video people. Yeah. But the reason is, why would Jesus say, I'm going to send you forth as a lamb? Yeah. You are totally ill-equipped. There's no competition between you and a lamb and a wolf, you little lamb. He says, well, the reason why I'm sending you forth as a lamb is because I'm not sending you out there by yourself. I'm backing you up. And the Bible says this, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You see, what happens when you take a stand is your name, your fame, your, your fortune, all of that, your reputation, will, may all be at risk, even your life. And you have to be prepared for that. Yes. To determine your position, where you are. Bernadette Devin, Devlin said this, to gain that which is worth having, it may be necessary to lose everything else. Yeah. But if you decide to stand where God stands, your, your conscience will be clean. Mm -hmm. Just laws and right laws will be honored. The people you serve will be protected. And your dignity will be upheld knowing you did the right thing. Nothing is better than doing what is right, despite what others demand. Whenever you decide to do right in this present world, there's something you do need to understand, though. You're going to be opposed. Now, of course, you, you candidates knew that, and you ran for office, right? There was an opposition, right? So you made with opposition, and the same thing spiritually or whatever you do in life. If you're going to stand up and do something right, you're going to face opposition. Somebody say, I'm going to face it. So let's get that settled. Stop being surprised when somebody throw rocks at you. <laughs> oh, they throw rocks. What happened? What I do? You did something right, dummy. Keep doing it. Right. Right. <laughs> and come with an arsenal. Going forward, opposition, listen carefully, opposition will be your constant companion. Yes. You heard it here from the pulpit. Oh, yeah. So do not be surprised when you get opposition. John Henry Newman said, said this, if we are intended for great ends, we are called to great hazards. I imagine Apostle Paul may have been surprised when he encountered the same kind of experience. He says in Romans chapter 7, verse 21, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Yeah. And that's the principle. 
in this sinful world, whenever you do good, there's always going to be somebody out there to try to tear you down, mock you, defame you, criticize you, do something evil against you, set obstacles and traps and snares in your way. It will always happen in this evil world, so get used to it. <laughs> You're on a battlefield, not a playground. Yep. Yeah. Come on, give the give a hand. Give a yep. This is more, baby. I, I, I sometimes wish someone had told me this when I started my Christian faith. Yeah. Because I thought, I'm a Christian. If everybody is so nice and sweet and wonderful and good and honest and true and all that sort of stuff. Huh. What chicken you here for, Pastor Greg? Uh, <laughs> that was a good theory. <laughs> that was a good theory, somebody said. Yep. Right. Yeah. And that's why the Bible emphasizes watch. <laughs> watch means to keep your eyes open, be alert. It's usually connected with praying. Stay watchful unto prayer, be alert. Stand in the faith. What is the faith? It's the word of God. What did God say? What are his promises? What are his commands? What are his instructions to you? Stay in line with that. Watch, pray, stand in the faith. Be men. Be of character. Don't be a wimp. You know, I, you know, until I got this principle, I used to go home and feel sorry for myself oh. because, you know, something happened to me. And I felt so, until one day God spoke to me and said, I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> Good. And I'll tell you that way. I'll tell you the reason why in, another, in, in a minute. Because the Bible says he's given us all things unto life and godliness. Everything that we need, God has given to us. What we yeah. need to do is grab hold of it. Come on. Billy Graham said this, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, Everything. all is lost. Yes, but if you decide to stand with God, he makes it clear he will stand with you. If you fight for him, he will fight for you. Keep that in mind. Because this God of the universe is always, somebody say always. Always. He is always victorious. And he will cause you to be victorious if you put your trust in him. He will lift you up. He will defend you. He will protect you. And he will make your way prosperous. Amen. God bless you as you stand with him. And God keep you always. Amen. Amen. Now, normally at the end of a keynote, you know, you have, you move on and you end and wrap up things, but I didn't want to do that. I, I asked, the Lord has guided me, and I, I've asked Deborah Costello, who's the executive director of First Choice Pregnancy Services, to come up behind me. And she's going to speak to you for about five minutes or so, and she's going to give you a clear example of what it means to stand. Miss Deborah, would you come?